the solo shuffle meta is going to see some huge changes. Blizzard decided to give us not one, but two massive waves of class tuning, both with hotfixes on January 24th and with the patch dropping in early February. We made an emergency group chat with some of the best solo shuffle players in the game to try and predict the mid-season meta. And today, we will tell you how the meta is likely to change in some pretty extreme ways. First up, we have one overlooked patch note, and it's the fact that everyone's damage will decrease slightly while total HP values will be getting buffed. Even though this change might be minor, it means anything that does burst damage is passively nerfed, and anything with high sustained damage is passively buffed. Once again, this is something we've emphasized in recent videos, the fact that Dragonflight seems to be all about mastering sustained damage. If you want to climb up in solo shuffle, you have to be really good at dealing as much damage as possible. This is why we've made sustained damage and healing guides one of the core features of our courses at skillcap.com. We've been collaborating with the most elite players in WoW PvP for over a decade, and we use their knowledge and expertise to design the best instructional videos on the internet. We even offer a rating gain guarantee, where we promise that you will gain at least 400 rating this season while actively using our guides. Check out the link below for an exclusive discount offer. Anyway, let's kick things off by breaking down the melee meta, covering the biggest changes overall. First up, we have our biggest winner, as we predict Arms Warrior will be making huge gains this patch and will be moving up to the S tier. Previously, Arms Warrior had a rough time in the bracket, due in part to its relatively weak damage mitigation. Even though Warriors wear plate, Arms seem to get bullied easily by other high tiers. But with the reintroduction of Ignore Pain, Warriors are getting coverage to one of their biggest weaknesses, which is sustained mitigation. Arms is also getting defensive stance and sweeping strikes baseline, which means more talent points to budget into other desirable choices. These changes, along with a few other minor buffs, should propel Arms Warriors into an excellent position in Solo Shuffle, and due to their high sustained pressure, combined with dynamic utility, warriors can fit into almost any lobby now that they seem in much better shape. Fury is in a similar position, and we're moving it up a tier since our last update. While it started strong in early Dragonflight, it began to fall flat after key nerfs to Slaughterhouse and buffs to Arms Warrior damage. But now, with some substantial damage buffs to almost all of their abilities, we think Fury can make a solid comeback. Blizzard has even dialed back some of the nerfs to Slaughterhouse, and with a 16 second duration, Fury healing reduction might be brutal once again. Since it shares a lot of its utility toolkit with Arms, Fury Warriors should have no problem fitting into most lobbies, and with that, we are confident in moving them up a tier. Of course though, the flavor of the month so far has been Rhett Paladin, who took the ladder by storm after buffs in early January. If we would have updated our solo shuffle tier list last week, Rhett could have potentially been S tier, but for now we're just going to put it on the A tier, where it joins the ranks of other highly competitive melee. Tuesday's hotfixes introduce a slew of nerfs to Rhett Paladin burst, while offering moderate buffs to some of their sustained damage abilities. Overall, this is a healthy change for the game as a whole, and despite being the subject of many details death logs, we think Rhett will now feel a bit more balanced. Another spec that we predict might move down a tier is Unholy DK. Don't get us wrong, this is a very bold prediction and we have our reasons. Unholy DKs are getting some key nerfs to Rune of Spell Warding, which is a passive that we've discussed plenty of times in this channel. This ability alone made DKs a nuisance for any spellcaster, where they were practically immortal against magic damage. Another change that is going a bit under the radar is a nerf to Enfeeble, which is a pet passive that reduces damage dealt to the DK by 15%, which is now getting hit by a 33% nerf. While some of this might be getting offset by buffs to Death Strike, we aren't convinced that DKs will remain nearly as dominant in the midseason. Speaking of going down a tier, we will also be moving Feral Druid down from S to A after class tuning. We've seen some complaints that Feral does no burst, which most of the time it doesn't really need when it is capable of doing 500k DPS with AoE bleeds. Unfortunately for Feral Druids, their damage toolkit is getting hit by some pretty substantial nerfs, and when you combine this with a reduction to Frenzied Regeneration healing, Feral might find it harder to dominate Solo Shuffle like it did in the early season. Don't get us wrong, we still think Feral will be good, but these nerfs will help balance out its enormously high AOE damage output. And with that, we have our updated Solo Shuffle tier list, which reflects the January 24th hotfixes and patch 10.0.5. We think Arms Warrior might actually pull ahead of the melee pack, as the meta might be slowing down to the point where its diverse toolkit can truly start to carry. As you can tell, the entire A tier is currently stacked, which is a reflection of the nerfs to both Unholy and Feral and the buffs to Rhett. With that said, the B tier is not going to see much movement, especially since Windwalker Monk and Sub Rogue damage is so bursty. With overall nerfs to burst damage and the buffs to Holy Paladin, that we will cover later on, these one-shotty specs might have been slightly nerfed. Moving on, we have ranged DPS, which will be seeing quite a large shakeup. First up, we are making the decision to move Balanced Druid all the way up to the A tier. 
This comes as a result of some considerable buffs to both their sustained and burst damage inside of PvP, which is joined by a complete redesign to both of their talent trees. So far, the biggest issue with Balance Druid is the fact that it feels quite useless outside of its cooldown windows, even when not getting trained. A Boomkin freely casting damage didn't really feel like they were impacting the outcome of each round, and with these changes they should be significantly more threatening. We're also making a decision to move Destra Warlock down to the B tier, which doesn't come as a result of any changes, but instead our updated opinions about the class. Currently, it seems like Destro is the weakest of all the Warlock specs, and despite some changes to existing talents in the upcoming patch, the fundamental problem facing Destro doesn't seem to be getting addressed. We've stressed this before, but Destro is the most fragile Warlock spec, and has a high tendency to get bullied in every lobby, with very few ways of punching back since Chaos Bolt damage is historically low. Some minor damage increases here and there might help, but don't address the fact that Destro is a punching bag for high tier melee. The last spec in the chopping block is Mark's Hunter, who we previously had on the B tier but will be dropping down to C for the meantime. This is due to a massive redesign to the spec in 10.0.5, including a complete removal of Double Tap, which has been one of their most iconic offensive cooldowns for quite some time. Removing an entire win condition is a problem for a spec, which is clearly worse than both BM and Survival inside of Arena, and just like Destro, Mark's Hunters will still get relentlessly bullied by high tier DPS. This brings us to our predictions for the ranged DPS meta inside a solo shuffle. Despite some nerfs to their burst damage, we still believe in the power Elemental Shaman and Arcane Mage since these are both pace setter DPS and should be able to adopt to a slower meta. Once again though, our A tier is fairly stacked, which mirrors our predictions for melee DPS. Though keep in mind that melee seems to be noticeably stronger overall in the bracket, though the nerfs to Unholy DK might swing that balance slightly in the other direction. That brings us to the healer meta for the midseason, which is where things might be changing the most. First up, the biggest news, Holy Paladin is moving its way to the S tier. When we did our initial video early in the preseason, we actually placed Paladin in the low tiers. At that time, very few Holy Paladins were playing melee wings, and now that pretty much every rank 1 pally has hopped on the bandwagon, it's crystal clear that Avenging Crusader builds are perfect for solo shuffle. The ability itself is getting a rework in the next patch, and Holy Paladins will be getting some substantial buffs to their sustained healing output. So here we have a case of a good spec getting buffed to the point that it is now a great spec, and we might be entering into a new Holy Paladin meta. Joining Paladin will be Disciplined Priest, who we are also moving up to the S tier. In case you missed it, Pain Suppression will have two charges in the next patch. Yes, you heard that right, two charges of a huge defensive cooldown. That's not all though, wait, there's more. Penance can now be put on the Shadow School, which means Discipline will be even better at dealing with interrupts. Maybe the Wrath Classic meta has made its way into Dragonflight, because right now the only thing we have on the S tier is Holy Paladin, Disc Priest, Arms Warrior, and Elemental Shaman. Wait, what about Resto Druid? Well, unfortunately, we think the Resto Reign of Terror might be coming to an end, and we will actually move them down to the A tier for now. This comes as a result to hot healing in two different areas, as well as a key nerf to Frenzied Regeneration, which is one of their most efficient defensive cooldowns in the bracket, acting as a big self-heal for zero mana. Even though you might intuitively believe that Resto Druids would be better in a slower meta, you should remember that there is no drinking in Solo Shuffle. This means Druid might actually have mana issues in longer games now that their sustained healing has been nerfed. On the same note, we will also be moving Preservation Evoker down to the A tier to join Druids and Shamans. Alongside a collection of random changes coming with the new patch, Dream Projection is now Dispellable, which is a bigger change than you might think. This is one of the best overall heals, capable of doing massive AoE healing inside of Arena. And now that it's lost Dispel immunity, better players might start abusing Evoker teams more. More importantly though, both Evoker and Druid seem to just be getting outclassed at this point, and might simply be weaker relative to Holy Paladins and Disc Priests in the midseason meta. Finally, on some high notes, we have Mistweaver Monk. We are fairly optimistic about this spec, and we'll be putting it in the A tier where it is in good company. Their entire talent tree is getting redesigned, and even though Bone Dust Brew is getting scrapped, the Mistweaver Monks we've talked to remain very optimistic. All three of its Tuesday hotfixes help address critical problems the spec has faced, and even though opinions are mixed over talent tree redesigns, we think Mistweaver Monk will be in a better position in the mid-season. So to wrap things up, we have the healer meta following the late January hotfixes and the 0.5 patch. Once again, the A tier is stacked, as was the case for melee and range DPS, which seems to indicate a healthy meta overall. Unfortunately, Holy Priests still seem relatively weak, and all the rank 1 players we spoke to seem pessimistic about their future, especially in healing intensive solo shuffles. 
And no matter where the meta takes us, we will be adding hundreds of solo shuffle commentaries every month to skillcap.com. These videos guide you step by step through your toughest lobbies, with expert level players teaching you the advanced tech of your class. And with these same players, we've developed insanely detailed class guides, which have proven time and time again to improve our users' rating in Arena. All this comes back to the rating game guarantee while actively using our website, where we promise that you will gain at least 400 rating or your money back. Visit the link below to learn more. Anyway guys, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know your predictions on the mid-season meta after the patch. Do you think there is anything flying under the radar? We want to hear about it. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.